Let's do an upcycle. Hi, and welcome back to my craft room. If you're new here, my name is Kelsey. I also call myself Dinosaur Mama, and today we are doing an upcycle. So one of my goals for this year is to not just do Cricut crafts and cutting machine crafts, but also to do upcycles and kind of explore all of the crafting space. So join me today as we take this incense booster bottle, you can really use any bottle you want, and change it into a vase. Now the bottle I am using is from Sam's Club, so it is a bulk store, so it's a little bit bigger, um, but this would really work with any bottle that you have that can be kind of cut into a flat surface. Our end result is gonna give you this farmhouse style vase, and it really doesn't take much. You probably have a lot of the materials around the house. My only suggestion, and something that I should have done, is to seal it at the end, either with more Mod Podge or a paint sealer, but that really also depends on the paint that you're using. You don't want it to wash off when you add in water to your vase. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the wrapper from this. So I used my X-Acto knife and cut a very light strip going down. I didn't wanna cut into the plastic. I only wanted to cut into the wrapper. That way it was just a little bit easier to remove. From there, I started cutting and what I should have done was marked it with a permanent marker first or some sort of line, even um, like a light cut, but I just went for it and started cutting along the top of the ridges here on this. I did rinse out the bottle, but you can also just rinse out the bottle once you cut. Just please, please, please be careful while you're doing this so you do not cut your fingers. I used an X-Acto knife and I probably should have been wearing some sort of glove to keep my fingers away. So 100% be careful while you're cutting. You can also go in with a pair of scissors um, after you make a small slice. It just might be a little bit wonky. So I ended up having an uneven surface and I did attempt to sand it with some sandpaper, but it was on such an angle that it was very noticeable and I didn't like it. So what I decided to do was go and fill up the vase almost to the top with water and then grab a permanent marker. Mine is gold. You can use whatever color you want. You can also use like a crayon if you want to. And I started marking along where that water was. And the reason I use the water is is because it's going to stay pretty much level the whole way around as I spin it. And this is going to give me a nice even measurement on where to cut. I should have done this from the get-go, filled it up with water up to the point, and then marked it before I started just going in with my X-Acto, but you live and you learn, and it still turned out great at the end. So now what I did was I actually took my scissors and cut down to the point on the line where I could make little slits and then kind of fold them out and cut them off. So it was bent down. That way it was even all the way around and it was a little bit easier for me to cut. I didn't have to worry about cutting my fingers off with my X-Acto. And so I made quite a few slits. You can make them as wide as you feel comfortable. You can make them really close together and do a whole bunch of them. The more you have, the easier it's going to be, honestly. But I just used my scissors to cut down to that line. Then I was able to go in with my scissors and just start cutting those pieces off. You see they're cutting off in little rectangles, but what's great is that I know it's all even. Now I know there is a line for my permanent marker. I did not attempt to even get it off because I knew I was going to be painting my vase, so I'm not worried about that mark. I just wanted to have a nice flat surface. So now I went back in with that sandpaper. It's a low grit sandpaper just to make sure that there weren't any like sharp little pieces sticking out along the top. You don't have to go crazy with sanding at all. So next what I did was grab some paint and in true fashion, I thought I could just paint right on there. And at first it was actually working pretty well. I was like, oh wow, this is going to work. But as the paint started to sit for a minute, it started to separate and I realized that it was not going to stay on the plastic. So I wiped it off and I went to my next resort, which is Mod Podge. So I am going to first Mod Podge the entire outside of the vase and then I am going to let it dry completely and come back in with two coats of paint. The Mod Podge, works its magic, I guess you can say, dries on and gives the paint the ability to adhere onto the vase. 
Also from the Mod Podge, it gives it kind of like a plaster look. So I was super happy with how this turned out. So here I am going back in with my white acrylic paint. It's nothing fancy, it's just dollar store acrylic paint. And I am going to do the exact same thing we just did with the Mod Podge after it had fully dried. I think I let it dry for at least an hour. And now I am letting myself paint all over this vase and I'm gonna let this sit again and let it dry completely before I put a second coat of paint on it. After the second coat of paint had dried, I grabbed my twine and hot glue and started to add on some twine to the top. So I started with a little dollop of hot glue and attached on the twine and then started wrapping it around and I used hot glue throughout to try to keep it even and also attached to the vase. So just use a little bit of glue around the top and work your way around to keep the twine even. And you can obviously make this as thick or thin as you want. You can use ribbon, but I really like the way the twine looks. It's kind of like a farmhouse vibe. And so I just worked my way around all the way to the top with my hot glue and my twine. For the ending, I just grabbed my hot glue gun and kind of glued along the top. So if there were any rough edges, it was covered by the twine. And then I glued the end of the twine just slightly on the inside of the vase. And so using the hot glue, it dried instantly. And once you have all of your twine or ribbon at the top glued into place, then your vase is ready to go. So this is a super great upcycle. You can also use this as like a cute little trash can for your desktop. You can paint it whatever color you want. There are a lot of ways to upcycle these plastic bottles rather than um, just recycle them. There is definitely a use for them. And I think upcycling is so fun and I'm so excited to bring you more upcycles this year. It's one of my goals for 2024 is to reuse the things I already have in my house and create something new and beautiful with them. And here is our final vase. Thank you so much for joining me as we upcycled our incense washer bottle into a farmhouse style vase. If you enjoyed this craft tutorial, this upcycle tutorial, then please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It helps me so much. If you enjoyed my crafting style, please subscribe so you can get new crafts every single week. And please share this with one of your crafty friends if you think they'd like to make their own vase. I can't wait to see what you make and what you make it out of, and I'll see you next week. Stay crafty!